So, today we've got the Bitcoin address types. First we've got the one that starts with the number 1, known as the legacy address. We've got the one that starts with 3, known as the nested segwit address. And the one that starts with BC1, known as native segwit. Now the first and oldest address, known as the legacy address, starts with 1. Can sometimes be known as the P2P KH or pay to public key hash and is the first address standard proposed by Satoshi and looks a little something like this starts with a one then a whole lot of characters after that and if you recognize this address you're a massive nerd because this is Satoshi's address in the first ever mined block ever created in block zero but unfortunately it has the highest fees when compared to all the SegWit addresses but it is supported by all wallets, which is nice. And there is no SegWit support. And unfortunately, it is case sensitive as well. Now, what is SegWit? First, it's opt-in, so you don't have to use it. If you want, you could choose to just use legacy addresses for some reason. Next, the reason why it's cheaper is because the signatures are separated. Normally, in legacy address transactions, your signature and all the other data is in one whole transaction but with SegWit addresses you've got most of the data but then the signature is separated and it's great because it saves space on the Bitcoin blockchain so you can fit more transactions into one block and you've got lower fees with the three address and even lower fees with the BC1 address and thankfully all addresses can send to all addresses so the legacy address can send to the three and the BC1 address the three address can send to any other address and the BC1 address can send to any other address. And thanks to the transaction data being smaller, means less Satoshis per byte you have to pay, meaning less fees overall. Now, first we've got the three address, also known as the nested SegWit address, and sometimes known as the P2SH, or pay to script hash address. And SegWit was added in BIP16 by a minor activated soft fork and it does have some of the benefits of SegWit, but not all of them. And unfortunately, the three address is still case sensitive and looks a little something like this, but thankfully you can save up to 40% in fees when compared to the legacy one address, and you can save up to 40% in fees when compared to the one address. Finally, we've got the BC1 or native SegWit address. Looks a little something like this. It starts with a lowercase BC and then the number one, and then a whole lot of characters after that sometimes known as the P2WPKH or pay to witness public key hash. Thankfully, it's not case sensitive. So a BC1Q with a lowercase Q or uppercase Q will go to the same destination and you can save up to 80% in fees when compared to the legacy one address. And because there's less transaction data, you can fit even more transactions into a block and it's sometimes known as BEX32 or native SegWit. In closing, the best address to use would be the BC1 or full SegWit address as you can save up to 80% in fees but the only downside is you have to find a wallet and an exchange that does support the BEX32 or BC1 address.